Guys, I could not be more excited to film this video. Today, we are going to be testing 45 different single shadow formulas. I'm not just gonna talk about them, I'm also going to apply them. If you guys are interested in seeing me rank these single shadows in a future video, please do let me know and be sure to subscribe so you can check back for that video. The motivation behind this video is that I have been getting into single shadows quite a bit lately and wanting to test so many different formulas. So I am primed, prepped, and ready for this video. It's gonna be a lot of applications, taking it off. The only thing I've got on are my brows. The emphasis is gonna be on more shimmery shadows, a lot of glittery metallic ones, not necessarily with a ton of base pigment, not necessarily all just kind of one and done. These are more of single shadows that I like to use in conjunction with other creams or even other powdered shadows. However, I do include cream shadows in here, cream to powder matte shadows or semi matte shadows and my shadow sticks. I don't have any glitters or loose pigments or anything like that. I should say loose glitters. I do have some like glitter toppers and whatnot. I am primed. I'm ready. Ready, hair is back, let's get sparkly. Most of these shadows come from either Ulta or Sephora. Only about a handful of them can you really only get on the brand's website but I will be linking everything in the description box. I will even include shades of everything that I'm trying on today. I'm gonna start with the most affordable. So the most affordable one was the Essence Soft Touch Eyeshadow and this retails for $1.99. This one was marketed as like a shimmery shadow and mine is in the color Champagne. This kind of just looks like a nice single shimmer. Like one you could even get in like one of their palettes. Nothing that would make me feel like this is just a standout formula that really needed to be in a single shadow. But let's just apply this. It's really creamy. Wow, that goes on super nicely. Let's just apply it to both eyes. This is nice. This is like a nice, just soft shimmery shadow. Like the description of it is soft touch eyeshadow. It's definitely a really, really soft formula. Essence has a really good shimmer or kind of foiled metallic shades that come in some of their larger, like longer palettes. This one is a little bit, like it says, kind of on the softer side, but I could see this being super beautiful with even like a stick. Just kind of putting a little bit of shade in the crease, putting this all over the lid. It's not overly light reflecting, but it's a decent shimmer formula and super easy to apply. There's no fallout with it. So for $1.99 being the least expensive in here, I honestly don't think this is a bad deal or bad product. This does say it comes with vitamin E in it. Interesting, okay. Plus I really like the shade. You will see a theme, you guys, in that I really like lighter shimmer shades. And so not a lot of these have a ton of pigmentation, or I should say like, they're not deeper colors. I do think this is pretty. I did not think it was bad. And for a buck 99, this is a lot cheaper than a lot of the other ones that may be similar formulas. So yeah, pretty nice. Let's move on into the next least expensive. These are from Makeup Revolution. They are from their Relove line. These are their eyelights. These retail for $2.99 a piece, usually at Walmart and on their website. I have the more pinky shade in Queen, and then I have the one that's like iridescent, it kind of shifts pink in the shade Shine. This is not a new formula to me. I did already have these in my collection, and I really do like these for $2.99. The one thing that I dislike about them is that they come with a plastic paddle as opposed to like a brush. I'm gonna put Queen on the right eye. I have hooded eyes, so every liquid shadow that I rate has to be pretty hooded eye friendly, or it is not gonna work for me. And I know these to be pretty hooded eye friendly. They give you enough time to work with them. And even this paddle, like surprisingly, even though it's really kind of annoying, it picks up enough product and not too much. I think they just went cheap. I feel like a little bit goes a really long way with this product. I'm gonna just try and pat it in with my fingers. When I try and blend it in with my finger, it's not as nice as just laying it down with the paddle. So I do not recommend trying to blend it in with your finger. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure that I messed that up because the minute I started to blend it in with my finger, can you guys see just how patchy it ended up getting? And this is a shadow that I have used in the past and it has never done this to me before. Going in too heavy is not the solution. This one on the other hand in Queen, it looks really nice. Now, 
In addition to having hooded lids, I also have like extra skin, like loose skin, so it's a little bit textured. So this one definitely looks more textured, especially because it's kind of like a foiled shade. This one, not so much, but this one looks extremely blotchy. I will say though that these ones like dry down and it's almost like stiff. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's not like um, a really soft formula. It doesn't stay tacky. It really, really dries down and locks down on your lid, which is good. I think if you like that, but yeah, it's almost crusty. <laughs> I do like this one in Queen though. I, I don't think it's a bad deal for $2.99. I like how light reflecting it is also. And I don't mind like textured lids. Okay, I just went ahead and reapplied to the one in Shine and it looks so much better. It is kind of iridescent, so it's getting a little bit of shift and it's more sheer, so it's not necessarily as easy to apply as like one coat of this one is. I kind of have to build this one up. But for $2.99, I still feel like these are good. I would just say the more sheer one is a little bit more of a finicky formula. I'm definitely interested to see how sparkly and red I am at the same time by the end of this video. The next ones also come from Ulta. These are from JCAT. These are called their Prismetal Chrome Eye Mousses. I picked up two shades and these do retail for $5.99 a piece. As you can see, these are still boxed. So these are a brand new formula to me. The two shades that I picked up were Crescent Moon Shock, which is more yellow, and then one that's more silver is in the shade Frosty Foil. So they're really, really moussey, like pretty wet when you touch them, but not a whole lot of like comes up on your hands. I don't know. This feels like you really have to spend some time rubbing it into the surface of wherever you're swatching it to get it to really lay evenly. This one is more chunky and it's drier to the touch. They're, this one's really pretty. It almost has like light sparkles in it. I guess they both kind of do. A little bit of sparkles. But this looks like it's going to take some elbow grease. Like you're really going to have to swipe this onto your eye. Hmm. And it's a little bit chunky. I don't know if I like this. I mean, it's pretty in theory when you're swatching, but in an application, Look how awful that looks. Um, let's see if we can't try the other one with a brush and see how that goes. I'm just taking a flat brush. This is a, ch a brush that I would use for a shimmer. I just don't know how well this is gonna pick up on a brush. Yeah, basically nothing, especially with this much drier one. I honestly love a lot of JCAT products. I don't think I like them. They're pretty creamy on the eyes. Like they have a good amount of emollients to them, but look how terribly patchy. There's more on my finger than is actually translating to my eye and I'm full of sparkles. <laughs> like this one is just mainly glitter. The yellow is a little bit easier to work with, but a lot less impactful. This is basically just chunky. <laughs> For $5.99, I don't think JCAT, I don't think they did a good job. This is the first JCAT product that I've tried where I've been not impressed, even disappointed. I just, I don't think that these are good because there are so many different formulas on the market that working hard at making something work is just not my preference. It's not my style, if you will. Let's move on to a brand we all know and we all love. These are just a hair more expensive by one cent. The first one that I have is the e.l.f. Liquid Metallic Shadow and this retails for $6. The one shade that I picked up was in the shade Moon. This is obviously a new formula to me. It has the nice brush tip applicator. The only thing I'm worried about here, ooh, even the shade is gorgeous, you guys. It's a champagne -y pink. Oh, I love it. Yeah, so the only thing that I worry about with this is how it's going to perform on my hooded lids. All right, let's go. Wow, that was extremely easy. The only thing is it's like burning my lid just a little bit. 
sometimes with liquid shadows they will do that depending upon what they're formulated with so if you have a little bit of eye sensitivity i'll try and be conscientious or cognizant about mentioning how it feels on the lid and this one has just a little bit of kind of burn at the very beginning it's dissipated now i took it above my crease but you know my lid still rolls it's actually really nice for hooded lids and it's such a thin formula wow these are actually really really nice you guys it's so thin and like look it doesn't go anywhere other than where i put it it's quite beautiful the only thing is that burn is definitely real i want to touch it yeah it takes a while to dry down it's not fully dry yet six dollars i think these are really nice so it did dry down on my hand and i forgot to kind of like touch that guys look how no budge this is it doesn't move and it has a beautiful dry down without making my hand feel stiff. So the next one also comes from e.l.f. This is not a single shadow necessarily. This is an eyeshadow topper. So this is the e.l.f. Liquid Glitter Eyeshadow Topper. This also retails for $6. I have mine in the shade Bling Bling. Wow, they are some thick glitters on this doe foot. Okay, so it is a glitter topper. There's pretty much no base pigment the glitters are numerous enough that it makes the shade look completely silver but it is basically just all sparkles feels like the same formula though let's let's get glittery on this eye here this one burns even a little bit more yeah if you guys have eye sensitivity you're gonna feel the sting on this one it definitely happens to me with some single shadows. That one's still really pretty though. Like you could even wear this on its own, I think. If you, you know, do a good enough job kind of laying the the glitters evenly. And there's definitely some fallout on it. I definitely am a fan of the liquid metallic eyeshadow. The glitter topper though, it serves a purpose. It's not meant to be a one and done. It's meant to be very glittery. It does that, it achieves that. It's still really pretty, honestly, for what it is. I still have to give it to e.l.f. for six bucks. I think this is a good deal. I think both of these are actually really decent formula if you can get past the little bit of sting initially. Wow, you guys, this glitter is not gonna come off completely. So we're gonna just abandon hope and keep on going. I hope you guys like being accompanied by a little bit of fall. All right, let's move on into the next one. Again, this is a brand we all know, we all love. These are the ColourPop Super Shock Shadows. These retail for $7. I actually went ahead and picked up myself an additional four shades. I did have one in my collection, but it wasn't my favorite shade. The one that I had was Birthday Wish, and it was a little bit on the lighter side, mostly like sparkles. It didn't have a whole ton of base pigment. So I picked up some other ones, not necessarily because they are more popular shades, but the ones that looked most appealing to me. So the first one that we have is Lady Bird. I've definitely heard of this one before. This is like your wet looking kind of single shadow. Let's waste no time. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm flipping you off. Sorry. Ooh, this one's really, really creamy and really nice. Oh, that's lovely. Just don't mind my the mess that I'm making. I'm trying to, I don't know, get as much space as I possibly can to really show you what the shadow looks like. I was a little bit under whelmed because of this shade in Birthday Wish overall. It's not bad. It's just very, very light. Can you guys see just how light birthday wish is? I'll show you guys like how light this is. And I was like, oh, okay. The super shocks are good, <laughs> but they're not great. I think they really do depend on shade. This one is so nice, you guys. It's foily and pretty and just, yeah. This like, I could see just really enjoying this for every day. Let's go into this one that I've heard quite a bit about. This one is in Ritz. Ritz has a beautiful taupey base to it Ooh, guys this one is gorgeous this is a beautiful one and done just all over leave it throw on some mascara you are done it's got just the right of like taupey base pigment with really champagne sparkles 
it's so beautiful. I'm pretty sure I've heard of this shade before. So far, this is my absolute favorite one from ColourPop. Let's move into Fine Pearl, which looks pretty champagne, I guess. Oh, wow. So that one has a pretty nice base pigment, too. That one was the creamiest of all of the ones that I've swatched, like the least glittery, I would even say. I feel like this one is not as impactful for me as I would like it to be. And part of it is because it's just super duper creamy. This one is almost too creamy. I feel like if you build it up, it's not bad, but I had to work a little bit extra, I feel like, to get it to be kind of what I'm hoping for. It's just a boring gold, it's just a little bit too light. I loved it so much more on the swatch than in practice. This one in Ritz is just where it's at, I think. Honestly, the thing with the ColourPop Super Shock Shadows though is the quality of them, I think, really depends on what shade it is. This last one is in I Heart This. This is a pretty darn gray shade. There is a swatch on that one. I think the moral of the story here is with these, the more flattering the base pigment is, I think the nicer the Super Shock Shadow is because this one's also very pretty. I feel like you could do even a one and done with this one. It's not as like glittery as this one in Ritz, but it's still got like this grayish base that's pretty nice. If you want something that is super wet looking, Ladybird is definitely the way to go. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, the next couple are from one of my favorite brands that makes like single shadows. I think they do a tremendous job. I don't think enough people talk about them when they talk about single shadows and they come in such a good variety of shades in every different formula they make and they make a ton of different formulas. So the next one up is from Moira Beauty. This is one of their super hyped liquid pigments. This retails for $7. I have this one in the shade 20 Extra Sparkle. Not a new formula to me. The next three I have, I've loved all of that good stuff. Just a super good formula, like smooth, light reflecting, good dry down time, and honestly fantastic for hooded eyes. And these don't add too much additional like texture to the lids. And I love the fact that these come in such a good variety of shades. And honestly, they're pretty affordable for what they are, being some of the best liquid shadows with a wand that I've tried. For $7 a piece, you could pretty much go ham on their website and get a ton of different shades that you like. So super simple to apply with the wand. It does take a little bit of time to dry down, but there's no transfer. That's such a big deal. Gives you time to work with it with no transfer. Let's move on to the left eye. We're gonna do another one from Moira. This is one of their Lucent Cream Shadows. This retails for $7.50. I have mine in the shade 02 Infinity. Again, probably one of the best cream compact formula single shadows that I've tried. It's right here. So just really light reflecting, really smooth, very easy to work with and good payoff. And again, that shade range with Moira, when they release stuff, they usually don't hold back. They go in hard, heavy with at least 10 shades. It's just, it's so easy and it's, so beautiful and also a really really buildable formula too and it's not chock full of glitters necessarily you could just get some really really flattering shades in this formula and while i'm over here applying it with my finger still these shadows apply beautifully with a brush i just love both of these there's absolutely nothing wrong with either of these formulas these this super hyped liquid pigment comes in matte, it comes in shimmer, it comes in so many beautiful shades. I just happen to get the extra sparkle one, so this one is more on the light reflecting sparkling side, but you don't have to do that. Their mattes are super beautiful and super pigmented and they have like a whole range of the rainbow. They just do a really, really good job. Like I said, they just don't hold back in the shades that they release when they launch these. And both of them are gorgeous for what they are. There's one more from Moira, so let's go into that one next. This is the Diamond Days Liquid Eyeshadow. This one retails for $8.50, and I have mine in the shade 05 Eye Contact. I really like this formula because I feel like it's the liquid equivalent 
of a ColourPop Super Shock with more base pigment. And like, it's super wet looking because of these super fine glitters. Such a beautiful shade, but like the same great formula as the super hyped liquid pigments because it doesn't transfer on hooded eyes. The only thing with this one is, it's one of the ones that does burn me initially. It has a really pretty strong burn in the beginning. One of my favorites, Moira does not get enough hype on their products for their liquid shadows. In my personal opinion, not enough people on YouTube talk about the liquid ones. I do hear quite a few people talking about the Lucent Cream Shadows, but these, I feel like they need more hype for sure. Let's go into a new formula to me. This is again from ColourPop. This is one of their shadow sticks. This one does retail for $8 and I have mine in the shade Socialite, which is supposed to be a metallic shade. So I got this because it was a little bit more shimmery and can be used on the lid individually. Wow, this feels like a beautiful, expensive formula. Let's go in. It's pretty, but it's textured. That's the only thing. By the time it gets to my lid, it adds a little bit of texture, but it is a very beautiful, like one and done shadow. I feel like you could apply this where you want to throw on some mascara and it would look absolutely gorgeous. This was a formula that reminds me of some of the high-end sticks that we're gonna end up going over. Not bad, not bad at all. Maybe a little bit textured, but other than that, decent dry down, really easy to apply. I feel like these are absolutely worth it for $8. Let's move on into a formula that's fairly new to me. I'm still testing this, but I have tried it a couple of times. This is the Ulta Bouncy Eyeshadow. This one retails for $9. I have mine in the shade Buttercream. This is more like a topper. It feels very creamy, but it does not have a ton of base pigment. It's basically just this super wet looking shadow. And that's pretty much all it is because it's so creamy and oily without any real base pigment. I have worn this on top of, so far, matte shadows just so that it could be a little bit of a topper, but I have also just worn this all on its own and it's really, really nice if you like something on the lighter side. I don't really have anything quite so light that's really, really wet looking. I think initially I was a little bit disappointed that it didn't have any real champagne or lighter base pigment and that it was mostly kind of just a glittery topper. But I think as I continue to wear it, I'm finding an appreciation for what it really is. Just a simple, simple, very wet looking single shadow. Not overly expensive and not bad. I wish though that they maybe would have called this like a topper. I don't know what the other shades look like, but when I was in my local Ulta, there weren't very many in stock. So I don't know how many they have in their line. Let's again move on back to ColourPop. This is one of their Jelly Much shadows and these retail for $9 a piece. I am drawing from one that is from a limited edition collection. So this one is in Drama Zen and they don't have this, I don't believe, anymore in their line. It is more of like a silvery shade. I think with the Jelly Much shadows, it's kind of a hit or miss depending upon like what shade you get. I don't feel like all of the formulas are made exactly the same. I held on to this one because I thought it was really beautiful, but I've had others that were more difficult to work with. Okay, so the camera battery died, um, so I just went ahead and applied this one. What I was saying was the thing with ColourPop Jelly Mud Shadows is they tend to dry out really, really fast. So unless you're really good at using these very, very quickly, they get pretty hard, they dry out. I even have had some go moldy on me before even like a th the three month mark. For that reason, I feel like these just aren't a good deal when you can get something similar to this effect that you don't really need this, especially when you have the Moira ones that have as much sparkle as these do in their liquid form and maybe even finer glitters than this is. And because some of them are a little bit more finicky in the Jelly Mud Shadows and because they tend to dry out really fast, I just don't think that they're a good deal. I think that these were ones that you could really just stay away from because you can get similar things that just perform 
better in my opinion. All right, let's move into the next least expensive. This one is truly, truly from the drugstore. This one is from Revlon. This is one of their Colorstay Cream Eyeshadows. These retail for $9.99, at least at Ulta, depending upon where you get them. They can go up or down in price, but because I did a lot of my purchases from Ulta, I wanted to quote the Ulta price. These do have like a little brush located at the top, and they are a glass component. They are the first ones to come in a glass component retailing at $9.99. So, I honestly think that if you like this formula, overall it's a pretty good deal, maybe even kind of travel friendly. I have never used this brush, but I kind of don't feel like you need to. This one is in the shade 705 Creme Brulee, so it's a more champagne-y color. I like these, they're just on the lighter side. I don't think you get a whole lot of pigment or a ton of light reflection out of them, but I think that varies depending upon the shade that you do pick up. I do wanna try applying these with a brush as I have never done that before. I have always just used my finger. Wow, really beautiful, really simple shadow. Easy to work with formula. I have, like I said, only ever applied these with my finger and have liked them for what they are, but they apply even better with a flat shimmer brush. It's light and it's pretty though. It's just beautiful for a simple look, especially if you would get like a taupe shade that you could throw all over the lid as a one and done. I think these are really, really good for just one and done shadows with no glitters in them. Really, really pretty light sophisticated single shadow and even for a glass component i feel like they're pretty darn good for 9.99 okay now we are moving on into the double digits you guys i have another one here that i have had in my collection for a while this is the ulta lustrous foil shadow this one retails for an even ten dollars i have mine in the shade silver leaf now this is very foiled it's not tightly packed in here it is very very chunky however once you start to really rub this in it becomes a very creamy flat shadow with really really high light reflection so when i first got this i made a huge huge mess i did not do the greatest job in application and i have never used it with a brush So I did not like it with the brush. I just don't feel like you can break up the glitters enough to make it look super light reflecting. It was still kind of chunky and not rubbing in perfectly. I feel like the best way to apply this is to take some on your finger and honestly just rub it into the back of your hand until it's a fully smooth formula and then apply in like single swipes to the eye. I think it is really pretty, but I feel like if you don't do that, you don't take the extra care on this, then it's really chunky and it just gets everywhere. That's what I struggled with when I first tested the formula was just how chunky and how much fallout I was getting. This time, the way that I just applied this, so much less fallout. And I honestly don't think it adds too much texture to the lid. It's very, very interesting formula. Like it's not something that you may wanna try and put on quickly. I think it takes a little bit of extra finesse, but I still think it's really beautiful for what it is because it is described as a foil shadow. And for $10, I don't think it's bad. However, I do have another one in here that is also $10 that's a little bit foily that I kind of prefer a little bit more. So let's get into that one. So the next ones up come from the Sephora collection. These are their colorful shadows, but this one is specifically the metal effect formula. Sephora has, I want to say four different finishes in their single shadows. Some are shimmer, one is glitter. I don't remember what the third one is, but then the fourth one is the metal effects. I specifically look for the metal effects one. I have three different shades here because I think that this formula is very, very superior to the other ones just much more unique than the glitter ones or the shimmer ones those remind me of shadows that i can get in palettes but these ones very specifically are very foiled but thin and just just different like creamier and more light reflecting i have three different shades so let's go into my favorite one first it's in first light which i feel like is an acquired taste 
because it's a chunkier formula. This one has gold in it and that's why I prefer it so much because I love a single gold shimmer. And then the next one that I have is more pinky. This one is in Oh Baby. This one, it's a wetter formula, less sparkle to it than the one in First Light. And then the final one that I have is a more silver shade in To The Moon and Back. I do wanna mention that these are absolutely refillable. You do not need to keep these in the container. They are magnetic, so you could put them in a palette all on their own. This top part opens up, so like actually quite nifty for $10 if you didn't wanna keep it in this component, which can be pretty difficult to open if you don't have nails, then you could easily put that in a single like Z palette or magnetic palette. So there is the one into the moon and back. I just enjoy this one so much because it's yellow. And that for you guys might not be something that you like. I just happen to really like a yellow shimmer. And I even love yellow shimmers in the inner corner. I think it looks really good. I just, I think that First Light has not stopped being my favorite. Let's go into this one in Oh Baby. This one is a little bit more textured, even though it's a pretty smooth formula. I feel like it's thicker because it almost has like a cream about it. And so I think it does kind of like make my lids look a little bit textured, even though it's not coming from like a sparkle necessarily, it's more coming from the formula. I just think that these are kind of what the Ulta foil shadow was kind of trying to go for, especially this one in first light, which I feel like just did a better job in my opinion. And the fact that they retail for the same exact $10 even, and because these are removable that you could create your own palette with this, take them out, they're magnetic, that they're a better deal than the ones from Ulta in my personal opinion. All right, I'm going into the one in To The Moon and Back. That one is such a pretty shade. I don't remember loving this one as, quite as much. But it's really, really beautiful. Doesn't it almost look like yellow on my lid? These metal effect ones, I don't know, 10 out of 10. The next two are stick shadows. So I want to move into those ones next. So the first one that I want to talk about is from a brand not a lot of people talk about, but they have some pretty good shadow sticks in their line. This is from a brand called Pinky Rose. This one is called their Jazz Base Stick. This one retails for $10, but they do sell them as sets on their website. And so you can get ones to create like a two and done eyeshadow look. I did not hold onto the other one that I had from this brand, but I held onto this one because it had just a teeny bit of shimmer. And I just, I overall really, really liked the shade more so than the other one. I think the other one is a really deep shade. So I didn't like that pairing, but they do sell this on their website for $10 by itself. It's just a really easy formula to work with. It dries down pretty quickly though, maybe more so than the ColourPop, but like you can still blend this out and make it look really nice and pretty as a single, like one and done shadow all on its own. It has a teeny bit of light reflection about it. It's also a nice like warm toned shade in jazz. I overall really like this formula again, pretty much nobody talks about this, but like just buff out the edges and it's just gorgeous, like all in its own. Throw on some mascara and it looks beautiful. So I actually do really highly recommend this. I don't know what other kind of products Pinky Rose sells, so I've never been tempted to go back to their website to pick up anything else and like place an order for more shadow sticks in addition to maybe some of their other products, but I definitely think it's worth checking out for the $10 price range. The next ones are actually fairly recent releases and they retail for just a little bit more. These are the Milani Gilded Eyeshadow Sticks and they retail for $10.99. I ended up picking up two different shades. This is a new formula to me. I have never tried this before. So the two shades that I have are 10 Canyon. That's really, really nice. It has a bit of shimmer to it. It's a more warm tone brown shade. And my other one literally just fully came out of this packaging. I haven't even used this or rolled this up yet. So get with it, Milani. For $10.99, I'm highly disappointed. And this one is a more sh pink champagne color, which I thought I could buff one of these into, wow, my eyelids are starting to get red, up here into the crease and then buff the other one all over the lid. 
even though this is a pretty deep shade. Let's see how that works. I'm not doing a perfect application here, so keep that in mind. I am trying to move quickly with these, but it dries down maybe a little bit fast. It's not as easy to blend in as the one that I just played with over here. Like this actually allowed me to diffuse it out, whereas like this one's a little bit stiff. So I'm, I'm tugging a little bit hard, harder than I would like to. I have worked with other shadows that are very similar to this and we will talk about those later because they're on the pricier side, but I think they're good to lay down where you want them. They're not super easy to blend in. Let me see if I can't just like, I don't know, layer it, make it more emollient and then see if it kind of buffs out. I, I can't even get it to move at whatsoever. So I'm struggling here. Oh, I don't know, I don't know. These are not easily blendable. So maybe don't get a shade that you intend to try and diffuse out. I am not overly thrilled with these. And I'm sure they're probably gaining pretty good traction and are pretty popular. But this one was extremely easy to blend. And by contrast, I'm sitting here doing these and this one is like, it's fully dry. Like I can't diffuse it out at all. It's basically not moving from the place that I put it. I'm, I'm sorry if you like these already, but I'm gonna say, no thank you, pass for me. It's several hours later, my eyes were really starting to hurt. So in the interest of giving my eyes a little bit of a break, I took about four hours in between. So let's move into the next one. I do have three shades. These are called the NYX Ultimate Glow Shots. These retail for $11. I started with one shade, but really liked the formula on these. So I ended up going back for two more. So the more orange one is Clementine Fire, fine, sorry. And then Raspberry Rave in red. And the one that is like iridescent or maybe just pearlescent is in Come Through Coconut. This is a really, really matte formula when it dries down. It's super long lasting. These two shades, highly, highly pigmented. Actually, they all are really, really pigmented. They also have a really good shade range in their line. I don't always use these on the lid. Sometimes I use these in the crease or above the crease and then blend it in because I feel like they're really easily blendable. So I don't feel like you need to use these as kind of a one and done shadow. I am gonna apply it this way this time. Do you see how opaque and pigmented this is? The thing with these are, you're not gonna wanna apply it in a way, I think at least, where you don't blend it in because they do transfer. It's a very, very liquidy formula. But I have built an entire eye look off of like these three shadows, kind of like I would building depth with a powder shadow. These are a really easy formula to work with. You do have time to blend the edges. It's really nice, like I said, opaque formula. I don't hear a ton of people talking about them, but I do think that they perform really, really well. So that's it, it's kind of a one and done. Much easier to blend than the Milani one for sure. I do wear this one and come through coconut alongside a matte shadow a lot because it's really punchy and pigmented and just all over the lid without blending it out. The only thing is, again, it will transfer because it's so liquidy. So you're either gonna wanna give it time to dry or really just blend these edges, apply first and then go in with a powder shadow. These are the first two swatched out. Here is them kind of like rubbed in and maybe a little bit more sheared out. They're just a really thin formula. They're honestly really nice. Like the ones that aren't super shimmery, the ones that pack a little bit more pigmentation, as a one and none, they're honestly so beautiful. Now let's go into that Clementine Fine orange shade on this side. I just love this orange shade. It's like coppery because it has a little bit of sheen to it. I don't know. I would say this one is probably my favorite and I didn't think that I would love these colorful ones as much as I ended up loving them. They're super long lasting. They will legitimately last you all day, all night. So I highly recommend these for $11. Let's move on into the next one, you guys. This one is from L'Oreal. This is the Brilliant Eyes Liquid Shadow. This one retails for $11.99. This one is in the shade Diamond Drop. 
I also feel like this is an underrated formula. This one is not new to my collection. It's also like really pigmented, but smooth. It's no one talks about these L'Oreal Brilliant Eyes, but as far as like what they do, it seems very similar to like what the Moira Super Hyped Liquid Pigment does. I like this one simply on the lid and pairing it with a deeper powder shadow. I apologize that I just don't have a ton of lid space to really show you how beautiful and punchy these can look. I think this one looks extremely beautiful. It's a really nice formula. It kind of dries down pretty quickly. It's almost like a powder finish, but it's it's still movable and it has such good base pigment, but still looks really, really wet. So I don't know why no one I see that's really into single shadows doesn't talk about this formula more, but L'Oreal Brilliant Eyes for $11.99, I just think it's overall a really good formula, good for hooded eyes, not very expensive. I don't remember what the shade range is on this, but I remember them being all a little bit more metallic. I do highly recommend those too. Let's move into a formula that is brand new to me and new into Ulta. This is the Half Magic Crystal Eyeshadow Single. These retail for $12 a piece, and I have mine in the shade Carrot Queen, and this is, I want to say, like their crystal formula. It's hard to tell because they do have some that are matte, some that are more shimmery and this one says crystal on it so i feel like there's something to that it's just like an egg carton packaging i got this one in a bit of a gold shade just because i wanted to do something a little bit different i'm just gonna apply it with my finger this is a shimmer shade it's not more than a shimmer shade it's just a single shimmer it's pretty but i have this like i definitely have this in a lot more <laughs> affordable ways than in a $12 single. I've been meaning to try Half Magic, but it is so stinking tiny for $12 for kind of what I'm getting here. But yeah, this is just kind of um, your standard shimmer shade that I have in a lot of palettes. So this is not a formula for me that I would recommend you needing to spend $12 individually on. Nice shade, but nothing extremely unique about it in a way that, yeah, it would propel me to spend another $12 on this particular formula. So while it's nice, I don't think it's necessary. The next ones are brand new to me. I've had them, I've swatched them, I have not tested them on my eyes. These are from Moira. These are their multi-chrome liquid shadows. You guys, I bought the whole set. I'm not sorry, I bought the whole set. They look super delightful. I organized this bottom row here because these look like the most unique shades. I got a more brassy toned one, pink, one that's more white, and then a blue one here. So I'm only gonna try those four shades on because they look the most unique. If I didn't mention this, these do retail for $12 individually. They swatched beautifully. So let's go into the one that is Jewel of the Sea first, which is, oh my gosh, it's like a purpley blue to like teal, it looks like straight mermaid. That's exactly what it reminds me of, like a mermaid. Oh my goodness, look at that. It is, it is fully like a mermaid. It has a strong green shift. Oh wow, wow, whoa. You guys, this is beautiful. It's a drier formula actually. A lot of the ones that I've been putting on are super emollient. It feels so comfy and pillowy going on. Oh goodness. And you can actually see a real shift, at least at the angle that I'm at, because I'm looking down that I see purple to like a green shift. Let me see if I can't build this up. Ooh, this is such a comfortable formula, you guys. If I could describe it, it almost feels warm on the skin. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous multi-chrome. Wow, that you could get really fancy with. Like you could do some really artistic things. I don't have a whole lot of luck with like multi-chromes and duochromes on my lid space, but it is super obvious. 
beautiful. Okay, this next one is in the shade Chameleon. And this one is like an orange, pink, goldy shift. Maybe even like purpley shift, I don't know. The, the shifts in these are just to die for. They're amazing, look at that. Gold, pink, oh, so beautiful. So beautiful, so beautiful. And the shades in it, like the shade range, very distinctly different in some of these. I don't think there's any real transfer on these. Not that I could tell with my hooded lids, but they are getting into my eyelashes, like for sure. Now let's go into this more pinky shade. This one is in Space Cadet. This one looks like it shifts pink, I don't know, maybe gold and like blue even. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, maybe a little bit blue. Let's go ahead and lay this down. Not as strong a shift on this one. Like this one looks mostly pink on the lid. Just maybe not my favorite. It's it's more solid than multi-chrome. Unless you guys can see differently on the eye swatch. Still really pretty, still a good formula. Let's go into this last one that is called Estella. I feel like this one is going to be one of my favorites because this is just a beautiful yellow shift, yellow green shift. There's that one, really flattering. That one is gorgeous. I love a yellow shimmer, a yellow multi-chrome. These are really long lasting and I didn't mention so far like how difficult these are to really get off on a singular swatch. Ooh, that one transferred right there, which is okay. I would go over it with a deeper shadow like into the crease and onto the lid, but still formula on these you guys, 10 out of 10 for hooded eyes. I'm not disappointed with this. Yes, they're maybe a little bit pricier for Moira especially. Moira typically doesn't, you know, go in the double digits very often singularly for their products. So these are the most expensive single shadow products that I've purchased from them. But I still think that it's worth it because the formula is honestly so nice. And like I told you guys, getting a real multi-chrome to transfer on a smaller space is honestly quite difficult. Even with multi-chrome, powder shadows i find it slightly tricky to get them to translate or shift on my eye space these are 10 out of 10 these are beautiful okay so i turned the camera back on and it wasn't recording but i went into the next one and i have it on my left eye now this is the flower beauty chrome crush pressed pigment this one retails for 14 dollars. i have mine in the shade quartz it comes with like a similar stopper as the Hourglass Scattered Lights one does. I've swatched it here. It has a decent base pigment to it in quartz, but it's pretty fine glitters. And honestly, I think that this formula rivals other shadows that are of this kind of nature that refract light nicely. For example, like the Hourglass ones or other ones that we might go over today. The only downside is the product is pretty far here in this plastic container so getting my finger into it is almost impossible but it still picks up on a brush really nicely i just feel like it would be much nicer to really just get my finger into this tube because i like the application with a finger just a little bit more because i feel like i can get it a little bit punchier but yeah not a lot of people talk about these from flower beauty but again i think that they rival higher end single shadows. I think they're super beautiful paired with a matte shadow. I wouldn't wear this on its own because I think it's a little bit too sparkly, too glittery, but still for $14, I do recommend that one. So the next one that I have up is from Juvia's Place. This is the Culture Duochrome Liquid Eyeshadow and this one retails for $15. I have this one in the shade Fula. I really do like this formula. This is not new to me, but it's more transparent it doesn't have a ton of base pigment on it. It's mostly just a shifty blue to pink duochrome that's mostly sparkly. I think it's a good formula, but I mean, if I'm being honest, the ones from Moira dry down much faster. They're not as wet of a formula as this one. And this one in the past historically has quite burned my eyes much more than probably any other one that I still have in my collection. And as you can see, it's mostly just duochrome sparkles, not a ton of real base pigment. So, I mean, it's nice. It's not bad. I really do like, like this over some of the other ones that I have tested. It's just not as impactful now 
having tested the ones from Moira. I just, I like those better. So I feel like for $15, and I think this is even less product, the Moira ones are really the better option of the two. The next one is from About Face. This is one of their fractal eye paints. This one retails for $16. This one is in the shade Tin Pan Alley. I have had this in my collection, so this is not a new formula to me. It's more of a dry formula overall. It kind of reminds me of the Moira Multichromes. I feel like it was a little bit of a harder formula to work with because it transferred horrendously. This formula has seemed to like dry out just a bit, so maybe it doesn't transfer as much on me. But yeah, with hooded lids, I don't know that this is the best formula for us. It's actually a lot nicer now that it has dried out. And I like all of the shades in this line too, but I'm getting a little bit jaded because I feel like the one from L'Oreal that was $11.99, the Brilliant Eyes Liquid Shadow is like very similar to this formula and maybe even more light reflecting. I think the L'Oreal Brilliant Eyes are just a little bit better than this one. I just don't know that I love these for hooded eyes. I feel like the L'Oreal Brilliant Eyes is, is just a better formula than this. Let's move back into one of my favorite stick products. This one is a tried and true formula, I think for a lot of people. I just have the mini, this is one of the Laura Mercier caviar sticks. This one in the mini retails for $17. I only have one shade, it's an amethyst, but as far as I know, this is a fairly popular shade. And I really like the fact that they come in minis because I don't go through a ton of product with these sticks very often. This is like the best taupey, I don't know, almost copper mauve shade. This is such a pretty one and done shade for single stick shadows. This is a pretty like sheer to medium, but buildable coverage formula. You do not have to blend it in as much as I did. And it's even creamy enough that you can really just blend this in with your finger. So this is one of my favorite taupe shades. I have loved this product probably the longest. This is the first stick formula that I ever tried and I still think it's one of the best ones overall. So while I think this is pretty expensive, I don't have any that perform as good as this one. This is creamy but like perfect dry time easily blendable, really good shades, just very sophisticated looking overall. Love this one in Amethyst. I would love to find one that I think is the equivalent. So far, the only one that I've tried even today that feels as creamy as this one was the ColourPop Shadow Sticks, the one from Milani you guys saw. I could not blend out very well. So that one is definitely not gonna replace that one. I would love to test the Bobbi Brown one that just released, but I think they're pretty comparable in terms of price. Let's move on into one that's a pretty unique formula. I've also had this one in my collection for a while. This is the Color Chalk from Milk Makeup. And this one actually retails for $18 and it is literally just a piece of chalk and it has little pieces of paper that you tear as you start using the chalk down. I feel like this is definitely on the gimmicky side and I don't think these were super popular and had great reviews when they first released but i didn't dislike it the way a lot of people did i kind of thought it was pretty cool this one is in the shade dodgeball it's not overly pigmented it's just kind of easy but like light it's it's weird i'm not gonna say that it's not weird but look at it it's pretty decent it's basically just like a pressed powder formula a little bit of a shimmer this shade is on the lighter side and if you wanted to get pretty rough you could probably build it up it would be nice to kind of just i don't know throw this in your travel bag and go with it just rub your finger dab it on you could even draw it on like i was doing i don't think this is bad i just think you can get this from a powder the convenience of it for me would be travel because it doesn't do anything that like a powder lighter shimmer can't do overall it's kind of light reflecting and softer and more ethereal but 
I don't dislike this one. So regardless of how gimmicky it is, I still think it's kind of fun. Now let's move into one that's brand new to me. This is another liquid shadow. This is from Winky Lux. This is the Chandelier Shimmer Shadow. This one retails for $18 and I have mine in the shade Bottle Pop. Ooh, this looks really luxe. This is a nice gold and the shimmers are extremely super fine. Let's give this a good old swatch. Ooh, this one feels a lot like the L'Oreal Brilliant Eyes. Really, really thin formula, extremely light reflecting, and it almost has like a curve to it. I don't know if it was intended to do that, but that's nice. When you're going on your lid, having a little bit of a curve instead of just a super flat doe foot applicator makes it a little bit easier to get into this bend. I feel like this one is punchier than the one from L'Oreal. I'm kind of comparing all these ones that are more shimmer or metallic to that formula at this point. This one maybe is a little bit more textured, but boy, they are pretty darn similar. I would say though, this one is more emollient than the one from L'Oreal. So it travels a little bit better and it's taking a little bit of a longer time to kind of dry down. I'm actually a fan of a lot of Winky Lux products. It's not like a super popular brand overall. I don't hear a lot of people talking about it. And when I saw that they sold this at Ulta, I was like, hmm, that's interesting. You know, I never hear anybody talk about this product <laughs> ever. It honestly is a pretty darn decent formula. Next, I want to talk about a topper that I have heard of before. This is the Ofra Spark Lights Topper. This only comes in three shades. It does retail for $18. This one that I have is in the shade Glisten. They make it seem like it's going to be so much bigger, but literally half of the box is empty and it's very, very thin packaging. Okay, so it's definitely a topper in that the glitters are more sporadic throughout. It's not as light reflecting or as wet as I kind of thought it might be. You know what? I think I will use a brush to apply this one. Let's see how it does dry on a brush. It is what it says it is. It's not meant to have a really strong base. I'm getting a lot of fallout with my fingers, so I'm trying to be careful. Still though, like you can layer this up to have a little bit more pigmentation than just sheer sparkle. It's not bad. I definitely would be interested to see what the pink one would do, even though I might not get a ton of use out of it. I don't know, pretty nice. It is $18, so I think you can get toppers that are less expensive than this. I don't think you need to spend the $18, but the packaging is also really nice. One of the benefits to having it like this is that it's in a flat compact and so you're not digging your finger into anything. So this is really convenient to get and it feels pretty sturdy overall. I, I do like that about it. Component I think does matter because it it helps with application, but for $18 in terms of formula, did we already do this today? Probably. The next one retails for $20. It is the Stila eyeshadow, and this one is in the shade Kitten. Kitten is a really popular shade. I don't know how metallic this one is gonna be. I was tempted not to pick this up because this looks like regular kind of powder shadow that you can basically get in any real kind of palette, but I do like the shade Kitten. It is the most popular in their line. This one kind of reminds me of the Essence Soft Touch eyeshadow, which we applied at the very beginning of the video where it's just a really soft shimmer shade is basically what this is. So is this necessary for 20 whole dollars? Probably not, I'm gonna say. The packaging though is a 10 out of 10. It's very, very sturdy. It's got a thick magnetic closure. It has a mirror on the inside where none of the other ones so far have had mirrors. Is this pretty? Yeah. But yes, you can definitely get this in a standard palette for much less expensive than you would spend on Stila. And this doesn't remind me of the shade Kitten that I have. Once it translates to my lid, I feel like it looks more champagne than it does pink. And that's what I associate with Kitten is a really pinky shade. I mean, at least the stuff that I have in my line is less champagne than this. Let me show you. I did not mean to say in my line. I meant in my collection. So this is their highlighter in the shade Kitten. It's very distinct 
pink hue to it where this one looks very very champagne so i'm not sure what that's about i mean the packaging is basically identical in a smaller version and this is almost a putty formula and this one is almost a better version <laughs> like if you made a single shadow out of this highlighter then it would be stunning they call this the heaven's hue highlighter yeah this would have been a beautiful wet looking shadow as opposed to this one which is just your standard powder formula shadow right like there's nothing overly light reflecting while it is soft it's just not revolutionary and i think these don't cost a ton more i think i don't know how much these cost but i mean look how much more product you end up getting in these yeah i just think if you wanted the shade kitten and you wanted a single shadow like go for go for the highlighter the next one that we have is a single paint this one is from give beauty it's called the paint it up Longwear mousse eyeshadow and this one retails also for twenty dollars i have had this in my collection so i do know how this performs this is not one of my favorite shadows simply because it's kind of on the lighter side it doesn't have a whole light a ton of light reflection once you blend it in i like this shade though i forgot to mention what it was this one is in top knot see how like emollient it is because it's this mousse it does kind of get everywhere unless you wanted to use it as a one and done i think it's a little bit hard with hooded lids because it's so emollient it moves around like it's it's one of the products that gives me a really hard time if i'm just trying to apply it like to the lid space and the lid space only it's nicer if i'm kind of trying to put it all over and for 20 dollars, i feel like you can get you know a similar effect without spending the twenty dollars so while i've held on to this it is not my favorite but if you like a more sparkly creamier lighter like thinner formula then i think it's pretty good okay let's move on into one that i have had in my collection but is fairly new to me i've just now put it in a speed reviews this is one from an indie brand phytosurgeons this is one of their flash fluorescent shadows and this one is in the shade starlight symphony this does retail for 21 dollars it's kind of a harder pressed formula in here i have not been the biggest fan of these because i find them like really really hard in there a lot of their products tend to turn kind of hard on me and while it's a pretty effect it doesn't have a whole lot of base pigment it's on the lighter side so this time i'm going to take a little bit of a dense brush and try and apply this because i have always just applied it with my finger i think you get a little bit more base pigment when you use a brush when you use your finger i think you get a more dispersed sparkle it's not overly light reflecting i don't know that the formula is necessarily my favorite however i have heard in my comments some people saying that this one in starlight symphony is the one that has the least amount of base pigment to it so there may be other shades that are just a little bit different i do believe that they have about five shades in these total this one just looked the most appealing to me because it's kind of a, a taupey sparkly shade but yeah I, I like the glass component. I don't love how hard the formula is, and I feel like you can get this effect with other shadows. I'm literally glitter is all over me. So I'm overall not a fan of the shade, and I'm overall not a huge fan of how like stiff the formula is, but I would be interested to try other shades to see if they have a little bit more base pigment. But as you can see, this one doesn't have a whole lot. It's just more like natural light and sparkly all right so this next one is a compact one it's the lawless the single one shimmering foil shadow this one retails for 21 dollars, and i believe she had it for a limited time on sephora's website but now this is only sold on her website and this one is in a purpley shade and it only comes in this one shade which is all a dream i again have only ever applied this with my finger so i'm gonna go in with a brush I applied better with the finger even though i tried to use just a dry brush this one is pretty and more light reflecting than some of the other single ones that i have but i don't know that i find this foiled and that's what it calls itself the single one shimmering foil shadow i find that it's 
a shimmer formula, but not necessarily foiled. It's just maybe not as impactful as I think of when I think of a foiled shadow. And again, I feel like I can get something similar from palettes that I have in my collection. So for $21, I don't necessarily think it is worth it, especially since you can only get this in the All A Dream shade, which again, I believe was limited edition. And then she's just kind of held on to like still carrying this on her website. Okay, it is a brand new day. As you can see, I have let my eyelids rest. <laughs> I did start editing the video before I was able to come back up here and finish and I am watching the tail end of me trying on the shadows and they are so bad. My eyelids are so red. Initially I was using cleansing facial wipes. These are just from Beauty Concepts and of course they they have like cherry blossom scent to them so they're not probably the best thing to use rub across your eye over and over again so i ended up at the very end getting my garnier skin active this is the micellar cleansing water this is the waterproof version and then i started using this with my little pads and taking off the liquid shadows and that was really helping so we are at the tail end of this try on you guys i am still super excited to do this here is where we get into maybe some more popular ones obviously the more expensive ones. I've done all of the inexpensive ones, all of the drugstore ones so far. So I'm definitely interested to see how these ones compare to some of the formulas that we've already tried. In watching the footage back, I'm definitely surprised to see some of my first impressions on some of them and how much I really liked them and enjoyed the formula and then remembering how I feel about some of these other ones. But there are some new to me formulas in this so let's get into it so coming up next these are a fairly new release these are from rare beauty these are her all of the above weightless eyeshadow sticks i have two shades and these retail for 22 dollars a piece these are not a new formula to me i have had these i have tested them i have put them in a speed reviews video so i already know how i feel about them the two shades that i have are the lighter shade that i would consider a lid shade this one is in integrity and then the deeper one that i usually use in the outer corner and then usually to shade all over is in compassion the thing that i don't like about these sticks is that they're very similar to the milani maybe a tad bit creamier the component of course is much i don't know much hardier you guys saw that the milani one fell out on me so compassion and integrity these are essentially similar to the milani in that they don't blend very easily and I feel like once you start blending, they blend into nothing. So I'm not even excited to put these on today. See, I don't use eyeshadow sticks as a single swipe, a one and done. That's just not my preference. And so for me, when it starts getting patchy like this, when I start blending it in and it doesn't hold its own pigment, I don't know, it's just, it's not good. I think feedback I've heard on these hasn't been super popular. I have seen one YouTuber basically say, Amanda Z, who loves single shadows, that these are a totally dupable formula. But see how they basically blend into nothing when you start blending them, and they're not even. And they should be, because the Pinky Rose one, very blendable. The Laura Mercier one, very blendable. ColourPop, also was super beautiful. So we have some comparisons that we can draw against with relativity that we know perform a little bit better, that blend in easier than these do. Now, I like this for an all over lid shade in integrity, but it makes my lid super textured. So it has a chunkiness about it that just isn't super flattering. I don't think these were the best in formulation. See how absolutely chunky the lid looks? So I'm not gonna even bother <laughs> blending these in anymore. I've already used these, I know how these perform. Can I make them work? Yeah, I can. Do I think that reaching for a Laura Mercier stick or even at this point the ColourPop one or the Pinky Rose one is the way to go? The answer is yes. I don't think these are a good formula. I think they're close, but I think they have some things missing and yeah, no blendability, not really, don't hold the pigmentation, start looking patchy. And then the lighter lid shade, 
super textured. So in my personal opinion, I think there are better formulas on the market. The next one that I want to talk about is not new to me. I have had this in my collection for several years. It's actually a formula that I really love that I don't hear a lot of people talking about, especially people who are really into single shadows. This is the Lorac Lux Diamond Cream Shadow. This retails for $22. This does come in a glass jar. This is in the shade Lace. I love this shade. Just this goldy, maybe even really, really light taupe shade, but it's super finely milled, teeny tiny glitters, but still like really elegant. And I can get my finger pretty easily in here because the product is like pushed up in the component. It doesn't sit super deep into the actual glass jar. Again, not a lot of people talk about this, but I honestly think this is such a beautiful, formula, especially for a one and done. It reminds me very much of one that is coming up shortly that a lot of people talk about, but this one is so darn similar that I'm surprised more people don't talk about it. So here it is. It's very sophisticated. It's a pretty decent formula, really fine shimmers. Let me take it just a little bit higher. This one is getting on the older side, so it's a little bit drier than some of the other ones that I've been using, but it still seems to perform really well. And overall, I'm a pretty big fan of Lorac. So I don't know if that helps that you guys can see it just a little bit better. But yeah, decent base pigment, beautiful fine sparkles, doesn't add too much texture, is $22, which is less expensive than some of the other ones that are, that are also very similar and very popular. I just think it's really elegant, really pretty. And if you're looking for just a simple, shimmery, light base pigment shadow that you can throw on, individually and then throw on some mascara i think this is really really pretty look at it just it, honestly it's so light but it's so flattering so i highly recommend this for 22 dollars this one is also a stick formula or format but it's not a conventional stick this is one of the kvd dazzle sticks this one retails for 24 dollars and i have mine in the shade force field I have had other shades in the past, silver one. This is a really interesting formula. It's almost wet, and I think that's why it, why it's in this style tube, and that you don't roll it all the way up because it'll dry the product out, or it's not in some other component. It's, it's like super duper creamy, but not overly creamy that it slips everywhere, and super, super fine glitters. I want it to focus so you guys can really see that. It's really, really beautiful formula that not a lot of people talk about, or at least I don't hear people talk about, and it comes in a pretty decent amount of shades. I think about a year ago or maybe six months ago, they launched more shades. This is just a super different formula on the market that again, I'm just a little surprised nobody talks about. So you don't want to roll the product up too much. You want to roll it up just a little bit if you're going to end up using the packaging to apply directly to your eye. Otherwise, I recommend kind of taking a brush and applying this, but I want to show you what it looks like when I, you just roll it up a teeny bit and apply directly to the eye. It doesn't get into the inner corner great, but you can just take a little brush buff it out. Now this literally feels cold on my skin. Like that's how wet of a formula it is, I think. It's just really easy to work with. Even if you were to just draw this straight onto your eye and give it a little blend, I think it works really well. I also think if you take a flat shader brush like this or shimmer brush other, it's a bit of a chunkier formula. I don't mind that as long as it's done right. And I don't know, I just think it's really, really pretty. Just kind of buff it in with your finger. And honestly, these last all day. It's a decent formula, and I'm just really surprised that not more people talk about these. I think for $24, it's definitely a high price point, but as far as I can tell, there's so much product in here and just a different component, just fun. There's a lot of good fun shades in this too, maybe even grungier shades, so. I still recommend this, whether or not it's worth $24. That is up to the consumer. I just think it's a really decent formula. And if you guys haven't tried these, I would recommend checking them out. Let's move on into a very, very popular one, 
potentially the most popular in this whole lineup today is the Urban Decay Moon Dust. And of course, I had to get mine in the shade Space Cowboy. This retails for $24. This one is brand new in the package, and this is a new shade to me. I have never tried Space Cowboy before. I had another one. I want to say it was Cosmic. I didn't like it because Cosmic was on the lighter side, but it has virtually no base pigment. It just wasn't my preference, and so I ended up decluttering it. Although I have swatched Space Cowboy, I don't know how many times, when in Ulta, and I know this is just a beautiful taupey based pigment glittery shadow, but it's really, really soft to the touch. And what distinguishes this one from others, again, is like the Lorac, which is just a really elegant, softer base pigment that isn't invisible. And the glitters and shimmers are super fine that it's basically wet looking. And I think that's what makes it super popular. So I'm gonna apply this to the left eye with just a finger. And this one's on the creamier side. It's more creamy than the Lorac formula, which I was telling you guys is on the drier side. And of course, this one is brand new, so I feel like it's even performing better than the one from Lorac. But man, their base pigment and their glitters are not that different. I'm looking at this one and I'm like, how is this so much different than the one from Lorac? Honestly, it's not. Let's like swatch them next to each other. Again, the Lorac one is in the shade Lace. It's lighter than the one from Urban Decay by just a tick. You can see the base pigment is more champagne than it is like this taupe and the sparkles are not as numerous. Like the ones in Urban Decay Moon Dust are more numerous and they're almost like bright champagne. So they're much more prominent. I highly recommend this shade. I can tell you though, that not all of these moon dusts are created equal or have just as much base pigment. Still think these are really worth it. I think moon dust will go down in infamy, but if you like single shadows, I feel like you need to definitely try moon dust. That is my final thoughts on that one. Still in the same price range. This one is also new to me. This is one of the Dazzle, Dazzle Shadow Extreme Shadows from MAC, again, retailing for $24. This one is in the shade Disco The Q. I have tried MAC shadows before and have even tried their single shadow formulas in the past, but I haven't tried anything from this line, which is the Dazzle Shadow Extreme. They do have several different formulas in their collection though, but this one is more on the metallic side. So I wanted to give this one a shot. The packaging hasn't changed in like 20 years from like what these singles have looked like. This one is a more silvery shade. I don't know what compelled me to get this, but here it is swatched. Very light reflecting and very smooth. This feels like a high quality shimmer shadow that you can get in a palette, but this is way more pigmented and light reflecting than their shimmers in their actual big palettes. So it's nice that they make this formula. They just don't make it like in their palettes, at least the ones that I have, they're all very, very light, non-reflecting shimmers. They're almost made for like weddings, I would say. I have said that like several times on my channel of their connecting color palettes that they've just recently released that are fully in stock basically everywhere you go. I don't know what other MAC palettes are still out there for purchase, but those ones for sure. They just don't make shadows like this in those. So it's nice that they have this. I like this one. It's it's so silver. It's almost blue. Super easy to apply. I just, again, when thinking of the $24 price point for what you end up getting for this, I just, I don't know that this is necessarily worth it. Even though I like the fact that MAC has got this formula somewhere in their line, I still feel like I can get the shimmer. Maybe not exactly the shade, Maybe I have something like this in my collection, but I have this in other palettes. I know I do. So I like MAC though. I like their formula. I think they're very easy to work with. Overall, as a brand, I like most of their stuff. So I am a fan. Do I think you need to spend $24? I mean, no, not really, not necessarily. This is not like doing anything that maybe some of my other ones in my palettes would do but it's still very beautiful. All right, let's move on. We're gonna move into some cream shadows. These are cream to powder, soft matte shadows. These are fairly new releases, and these are the solo shadows from Merit. These, again, retail for $24 if I didn't already say that. The only thing that I don't love about this is the packaging is pretty difficult to open. It clicks, and I think it clicks so that it doesn't dry the product out, so you have to 
really twist at the very end to get it to snap back like fully clicked so that it, it doesn't dry out if that makes sense it's almost like a, a safety mechanism at the very end so it makes it hard to close not necessarily to open i have two shades i have one in social which is described as a taupe shade i want to say and then this one in studio no this is my taupe shade and then this one in social i think is more a mauve shade i would normally pair both of these together so that's just what i'll do these launches also came with their own brush that's dual ended it's got one end that i think is more for like detailing if you wanted to smoke out the outer corner things like that and then just a very dense like short bristled brush I ended up buying it just because I just wanted to like see how it worked plus I was in the store when I picked it up and it was there and I got to feel it. It's not that I don't have brushes like this that are more on the dense side like this but the brush is honestly really good quality and it works perfectly for these shadows. They're just creamy enough, I don't know, but matte enough but they're like perfectly formulated. I thoroughly enjoy these. I'm gonna throw taupe on just the lid. I mean, not a huge contrast, but just so that you guys can see. But I also think that these are very nice shades because they're matte to also wear like on their own, just a one and done. I felt like this was, I don't know, it was invited, it was nice, it was new, it was needed. 24 bucks for these I feel like would take you a really long time. I like all the shades, I love the formula. I think it's really easy to work with and I think it's user friendly. So. I do recommend those and I do think they are worth $24. Okay, let's move on. We have another liquid shadow. This one is brand new to me. This is the Half Magic Chrome Addiction Shimmer Eye Paint and Liner. This one retails for $25. This one is in the shade ASMR. I have heard about this shade before. Ooh, this one's pretty. I don't know how strong the base pigment is. Maybe it's fairly strong. It's hard to tell. These glitters are so like tightly pressed together and they're iridescent. It feels like a decent formula. It dries pretty darn quickly. And this is the first one that's had a little bit of tack to it. All the other ones have been like pretty, I don't know, like on the drier side. Love the packaging though. Let's go for it. Ooh, you guys look how pretty this is. Holy smokes. I mean, I don't know how good of a job I would do applying this as a liner, but I bet you could. Wow, this is like a taupey base with like duochrome shimmers. Like is, is that the best way to describe it? I mean, it's nice. I don't know if it's hooded lid friendly because I went so high above the crease because I really wanted to see this shade shine, but this shade is gorgeous. I don't think we've gotten to one that quite has this the number of different color sparkles in it maybe the only ones that kind of come close are the moira ones but are they as light reflecting and as chromey as this one i don't know i'm i'm a fan of this so far i really like it it's it's still sticky though so you know it needs a minute to dry down so far i'm liking that formula but i want to move into one that is one of the older <laughs> liquid shadows or into liquid shadows or one and done shadows we probably have heard of this one before and i have two formulas here so we're gonna try both of them i've got the stila this one is the glisten and glow liquid shadow i have mine in the shade kitten kaleidoscope i have had these in my collection before but not in so long i can't even remember what this formula is like i want to say though that this has got to be the og formula the formula that started it all here it is right here has a really nice base pigment. The glitters are like super duper fine, but also they're pink. They're very, very light pink glitters. In contrast, this is a much wetter formula than the one from Half Magic. I feel like there's nothing wrong with going back to the OG. This is really pretty. I specifically picked the shade in store when I was swatching it because I felt like it had a decent brownie base and I feel like those are kind of the most flattering but they also help the shadow to be more chrome like more light reflecting when they have this color base yeah it remains a little bit wet so I could already tell this is going to be a formula that you're going to want to be careful or take it above your crease if you have hooded lids 
I, I can already tell that it's like a little bit stingy and the wetter the formula is usually the more sensitive my eyelid is like whatever it is about the wetter shadows they sting a little bit so that one is glisten and glow but they also do have another formula and i'm not sure which is most popular but they also have their glitter and glow and these retail for the same 25 dollars. i ended up buying this one in store when i picked up the other one and then they passed on a free sample which you can get at ulta right now if you buy these online you can get one free mini and so the mini is in kitten karma and then the big one that is the glitter and glow is in diamond dust so let's throw both of these on next i'm not certain i've tried the glitter and glow formula i'm pretty sure i've only tried the glisten and glow here's the one in diamond dust can you guys see there's almost no base to it it's just a ton of glitters and again a pretty wet formula so i feel like if you take this and just apply it directly to the lid it's going to be just a bunch of sparkles yeah that's pretty much what it is just a bunch of little sparkles i don't know i mean it's nice for glitter i don't think the glitter is the most even thing i've ever seen can i just like lay oh there you go there it's a little bit better okay so it, it matters like how much you have on your brush i think it's really pretty i think for what it is it's really nice i think i prefer the other formula but still the glitters here are not so chunky i think they have a time and place Let's throw on the other one, which is, I think it's like more pink. This one is in Kitten Karma. This one has base pigment to it though, unlike the other one, even though they're the same formula. This one almost looks more like the Glisten and Glow. Lot less glitters, lot less glitters. The other one is just all glitter. But look how much pinkier this is than it is glittery. And the glitters, even though they're there, they're a ton smaller. These are very different for being the same formula. I still think I like the Glistening Glow better, even though I like this one in Kitten Karma. I just don't think this gives you enough dimension and looks a little bit childish, where this one is just a little bit more elegant because it has the base pigment. Let's move into one that is actually a limited edition, but you can get it right now. So I figured we could go over it because this was already in my cart, already wanted to pick this up before I thought about doing this video. This is from MAC, this is their Sparkler eyeshadow. And I think it's their limited winter edition, if I'm remembering correctly. Unlike their other single, this one retails for $25. This one only comes in three different shades. I I picked up the shade Zero Chill. I picked up the one that's almost like purple. It's not a huge payoff. It's okay. It's on the softer side, but look what I did to the actual product. I took away so much of the ridging because I'm really digging hard to get like a decent swatch. This is on the lighter side. I mean, you guys can see that. <laughs> okay not um again not extremely revolutionary here super light not what i was expecting i don't know the pictures just made it look like there was so much more light reflection not that it's not pretty it's just light that's what it is you have to like this it's not a bad purple but i feel like every time i go for a single i always look for punchy something i can't get elsewhere and so I'm not sure that this achieves that. I could have lived without this. I'm just gonna say that about this formula. Let's move on into one that I am familiar with. I have tried this formula before. This is from M Cosmetics. This is her Cosmic Pearl Dewy Eyeshadow. This one, and I have two shades here, retail for $26 a piece. The shade I'm showing you now is Luna. It's the shade that I started with. It's what made me fall in love with this formula. I really still find it very unique. Even though we've been swatching and eye swatching a ton of shadows, I still feel like we haven't come across anything that's like this in a compact that's as creamy as this. Maybe the Lucent Cream shadows that we tested from Moira come pretty close, but they're not as creamy or as dewy as these ones are. They're like putty. They're like wet. They like grip your skin and they're super smooth and super light reflecting 
I just, I don't have anything quite like this. Once they get to the lid, however, they are a bit textured. The other one I have, I just recently picked up. This is a pinkier shade and it's in Moonrise. And the reason that I picked this up is because I've been meaning to get a different one because I loved Luna so much. The thing is this one doesn't have as much light reflection. It's just not as impactful in Moonrise. So yeah, I just don't, I just don't find that it's as like glisteny, especially when it gets to the lid. So let's go into the one Luna first. And I always just apply these with my finger. I've, I don't know if I've ever tried it with a brush, but we can try the next shade with a brush. But see just how like silk, just basically silk on the lid. They go on very easy. I feel like the pigmentation can just, oh yeah, pretty much just go down my arm. It carries and carries and carries. It doesn't transfer as easily from your finger to an eye swatch as it maybe seems like it would, but it's still super beautiful. But can you guys see what I mean about how like it does leave the lid slightly textured? I don't have anything just quite like this as what they call dewy. I would say, yeah, that's a good word to, to really describe these. I love the component too. It's kind of an experience. It's like bigger and plastic and Aesthetically, I think that's nice. Okay, now I'm going into that one in Moonrise. You know, I kind of take it back. It's nice. It might just be a shade thing. I don't think it's not as light reflecting because of the shadow itself. I think it's more because of the shade. It's still really pretty, but yeah, I mean, maybe it's not as light reflecting. I still don't think I have a formula that's quite like this. And overall, with the experience of it. I'm not sorry that I have two shades. I really, I really just enjoy these. So, and I don't feel like the formula is anything like a shadow that I have in another palette. So those are my final thoughts on that one. We are on to our top four, our most expensive. So let's get into it. You guys, I'm sure you've heard of this one. This is the Hourglass Scattered Light Glitter Eyeshadow. This one retails for $30. This one is in the shade Aura. I've been a really big fan of like this formula. I've only ever tested this shade, but I do really enjoy it. The thing that I wish for $30 and being the fourth most expensive one that I have in my collection, that they would have come in a glass jar. That's, I think, my only criticism. I don't have any trouble getting my finger in here, but again, the shadow itself is pretty far into the bottom of the pan. So this one is a more pinky shade. They call themselves the Scattered Light because I think the little glitters that are in there are so fine, so finely milled, so evenly dispersed that they're super flattering, not like solid light reflection, but that they catch the light kind of just in the right way. These aren't overdone, they're elegant, but they're so smooth and they're like a cross between like a wet and a dry formula. I would say they're more on the dry side though. And I think what separates it is that it looks really smooth, much more smooth than a lot of ones on the lids and that the glitters are just super finely milled. So, Yes, I do think those are good for $30, especially knowing that some of their competition is relatively priced. Let's move on into another one that I have talked quite a bit about recently. These are the Eyes to Mesmerize from Charlotte Tilbury. So these are a cream shadow and these you retail for $35 a piece. I have two shades. One that is a more taupey shade is an Oyster Pearl which I have been referring to as like her most popular shade. And then the one that's more pink is in Pillow Talk. These are the most creamy cream shadows that I've ever tried. They're like easily slippy if you don't really rub them in to the point where they're smooth on the lid because they can just keep going because they're just so creamy that the actual shadow itself can just keep going and going. And so the best way that I have found to make these work for me is to blend them into the eye to the point of like almost matte finish. Oops, <laughs> they're not a matte finish. I feel like the one in Oyster Pearl has a bit of a shimmer, a bit of a light reflection. I think these though, like once they get to the eyes, you can build them up, but they're almost more sheer. They're, they're again, they're just, in my opinion, just quite elegant. I still wanna rub it in because especially in humid weather where I live, 
I have had these slip off of me if I lay them too thick without really blending them in before. So I, I definitely had a learning curve when I first tested these. So you can keep building them up. I think they're beautiful on their own as a single one and done. I've paired these with shimmers before. I've even laid like a little bit of glitter on top of them just to give this one in Pillow Talk, I don't know, a little bit more dimension. But I've even worn Pillow Talk in the outer corner and then I've had this one in Oyster Pearl kind of all over above the crease. I think you can do a lot with these. So I think they're really good. Again, just a learning curve for me on them. And they're glass jars, which I really like. And I feel like there's quite a bit of product in here. So I thoroughly enjoy these. I think for $35, they're definitely a unique experience. They're nothing like anything else I have tried so far. Okay guys, we are on into the top two, the most expensive. So coming in in second place, I guess, are the Lid Lusters from Victoria Beckham. These are $36 a piece. They do come in fully ceramic containers. I have two shades. One is a newer shade to me. It's more pink, I wanna say, or even like slightly taupe. And this one is in chiffon. This is not the one that I had originally. I had this one in blonde originally, which has a yellow base to it, which I feel like, again, is an acquired taste. You have to like a more yellowy, Kind of lid shade almost like a white with yellow shift which it might not be a lot of people's preference when thinking of a single shadow i think they may prefer something like chiffon which is a more taupey shade which is more indicative of what you would wear as like a really one and done this one is almost more like something you would pair to accentuate your lid or a smaller lid space to wear with a matte shadow and that's kind of my preference. So I didn't love chiffon because it's just not as in your face. Just look at this, like beautiful, oof, just yellow base with a ton of sparkles. I don't have anything this yellow or this quite this vibrant. This is a really, really smooth formula too. So it also gives you that, where some of the other ones that are still light reflecting might be a little bit more chunky. For example, like the M Cosmetics. I just feel like this one is extremely smooth. All right, let's go into Chiffon. Now already, it's just a lot lighter. So this might be good for people who are looking for just a kind of simple one and done. And if you're a fan of Victoria Beckham, so far, the only thing that I've tried from her line that I just don't love is her new mascara. The Vast Lash is not my favorite. I'm not saying it's bad, it's just, it's not my preferred style, like style wand and whatnot, but everything else from her line I really like. See how much lighter this one is and why I could have easily fallen in love with this formula having tested the blonde shade first. So. Yeah, not bad, not bad. But you know, I feel like chiffon doesn't do anything like an inexpensive or, or less expensive shadow can do where I do with this one. This is the one where I felt like, oh my gosh, this formula is just so much different. And I think it was just a shade thing overall. I think Victoria Beckham being a luxury single shadow and a luxury brand overall, it's an experience. All of her packaging is very well done. Everything is very good quality. And most of her packaging is in like ceramic containers. So they're all aesthetically very pleasing. And you have to remember that when you're dealing with luxury that it may not be what you think of when you think of high end or if you're looking for more impact. With luxury shadows, I think most of them are on the more subtle side anyway. I still think it's pretty. I just think this is for someone else. This is my preferred like single impactful shimmer. Okay, so the very final ones coming in at the most expensive, also from a luxury brand. These are the Chantecaille Luminescent Eye Shades, and these retail for $56 a piece. I have two shades, but I only started with one when I originally purchased them for the first time. I started with Cheetah, which is a warm champagne, and because I liked it so much, I went back for a zebra, which is a rose gold. But just like the Victoria Beckham, I still have a preference. I still prefer the cheetah, I don't think I would have needed both. They're not revolutionary. They're just soft, light, sophisticated. I prefer the warm champagne just because it's a shade that I much prefer, like on the lid instead of like all over. And while I think that zebra is pretty, 
it's just not something I find myself reaching for for a lid shade and that's how I would use these and also I don't find it as light reflecting I could have lived without zebra but I still really enjoy the cheetah this is the softest one of this whole lot this is also like a baked gelée formula and none of the other ones have been like that do I think though that you're getting $56 worth and it translates to something unique that some of the other ones didn't do mm -mm. no if you told me this was the Chantecaille and we started with the one that was $1.99 from Essence could I tell the difference the answer to that is probably no. Do I think there's an experience in Chantecai and just having luxury? Yes. But aside from that singular statement, I don't think they do anything that other ones can't do. And I still think you could do these as one and done. I just don't think that they're revolutionary. So those are them, Chantecai Luminescent Eyeshades. I feel like they swatch better than they end up looking on the eyes. I don't think they're bad, but again, I don't recommend them necessarily for $56 and these being a $20 price jump from the one before that, I feel like you can save your coin and go for some other formulas that we tried today. That is all for me today, you guys. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you guys are interested in seeing me rank these, I would love to do a ranking video of my single shadows, but just let me know down in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up if you are interested. I do wanna hear in the comments from you guys of what formulas I've tried today that you guys have tried, how you feel about them, which ones are your favorite formulas that you have in your collection or that you've tried? Maybe some that I didn't try today. I always love to hear it, listening to your guys' feedback and, and maybe even some recommendations. Sometimes sways me to try different things that I haven't tried before or thought about trying. Plus, I would just love to hear from you guys. I am out of here for today, you guys, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Bye, guys.